Well, it finally happened. A Higante ate my Shibumi. Actually, a few of my subscribers are on the fence between buying the Shibumi shade and one of the Nesso beach tents, namely the Grande and the Higante. So I thought, why not size all three of them up in one big review video? Which led me to my most ambitious and terrifying wind test yet. Now the Shibumi Shade Canopy is 17 feet by 9 feet when it's flat. The Nesso Higante Beach Canopy is about 11 feet by 11 feet. When set up correctly, the center top of the Shibumi Arch should be around 6.5 feet tall, and the Nesso Higante poles are 8 feet long. As you can see here, the Higante Beach Tent can gobble up most of the Shibumi Shade. If height is a big factor for you, the Nesso Higante may be the beach shade for you. The Nesso Grande poles are a foot short than the Higante poles, and the canopy is around 9 feet by 9 feet. The Grande tried to eat the Shibumi, but couldn't quite manage it. Now, I actually did this so you could see the difference between the Grande square shape and the Shibumi's rectangular shape. I like the Shibumi's rectangular shape because you can actually fit five of your buddies on beach chairs right across the front from side to side. Hey, if you're finding this video helpful so far, please hit that like button. Now you can sometimes provide shade for four family members across the front of the Nesso Grande, but on this particular day, the angle of the sun and the wind direction weren't really cooperating. So I made a half moon configuration underneath it, which provided enough shade for five beach chairs. As for the Nesso Gigante, you'll certainly get more shade and more headroom. Now I propped up both Nesso beach tents with four poles, which naturally provided more headroom but not much more shade. If you're still trying to get a handle on the actual size and scale of the Higante, how's this for a little help? Now these three beach canopies take up more space on the beach than let's say a half dome beach tent. The Nesso Higante footprint is 25 feet by 25 feet which is a lot of real estate on the beach. The Grande footprint is about 23 feet by 23 feet, and the Shibumi takes up the least amount of space, roughly 20 feet by 14 feet. Now, all three of these canopy beach tents need to face into the wind to work right. The setup instructions for both Nesso beach tents are exactly the same. The most time-consuming part is loading up the anchor bags with sand and then stretching them out so you get that perfect, X shape on the beach. Beyond that, the setup is really fast and easy. The Shibumi shade is also pretty easy to put together. First, you want to connect the aluminum pole segments together, which is like assembling a 25 foot long tent pole. Then you want to thread the canopy through the channel in the fabric. It usually gets hung up right here in the middle, so be careful not to be too forceful when you pull it through, because tearing through the Shibumi shade fabric would definitely be a bummer. Next, you want to insert each end of the pole into the sand at a depth of about six inches. Now, all you have to do is turn the carrying bag inside out and fill it halfway up with sand so it can be used as a counterweight, which will help stabilize your shibumi. And then finally, just wrap the elastic straps a few times around the pole and then snap them. Now, I can usually set up the shibumi shade in less than half the time it takes to set up one of the Nesso beach tents. However, once it's up, the shibumi shade is very fussy when it comes to the wind direction. So when the wind shifts, you'll have to readjust your Shibumi. And when the wind drops below three miles per hour, so will the Shibumi shade, which can be embarrassing if you're trying to show off your new beach shade to your family. Now the Nesso beach tents don't need any wind to work correctly, and they're not as fussy about the wind direction. So now you may be thinking, how much wind is too much wind for these canopy beach tents? To find out, I first set up the Shibumi shade when the winds were bouncing around 20 miles per hour. Now the Shibumi shade company doesn't recommend setting up their beach shade in winds greater than 20 miles per hour. And quite frankly, I don't recommend it either. I'm doing this to show you how these beach tents would react if a calm day at the beach suddenly turned into a windy day at the beach. And we're about to find out how both of these beach shades react in 50 mile per hour gusts. Yeah, you heard me right. Unfortunately, I had no idea it was gonna get this gusty. And despite me weighing down the tripod with a bag filled with rocks, it still went down, taking down my new camera and my new wide-angle lens. It would certainly help ease the pain if you hit that like button, as well as subscribe to my Beach Gear Guy channel so you don't miss out on future review videos. Well, I carried on with my trusty GoPro and managed to set up the Nesso Grande 
by stretching out the anchor bags, stuffing them with sand, and then burying them. I then managed to prop up the front of the grande with the two poles so the opened end faced directly into the wind. Now the wind is cranking. It's all I can do to hold the anemometer so it doesn't fly back and hit me in the face. And both of these beach tents are holding their own as they take a serious beating. Now it goes without saying that nobody in their right mind would set up a beach tent and then sit under it in these ludicrous conditions. But as you know, the weather at the beach can change suddenly and without warning. So it's nice to know how these sunshades would react in case it does. Now you may be thinking, why is it the Nesso Gigante competing in this mega wind test? Well, last year, I set up the Nesso Gigante when the wind was blowing around 15 miles per hour. And this happened. So the Gigante wouldn't be my first beach tent pick for a windy day at the beach. Oh, by the way, I inspected both the Grande and the Shibumi after the wind test, and I couldn't find any damage. Now, the Nesso Grande and the Gigante canopies are made of a stretchy lycra nylon blend that provides UP. 50 plus sun protection. The Nesso Beach canopies also do a good job repelling water. The Shibumi Shade is made of a lightweight polyester, which according to the Shibumi Shade website, provides UPF 30 sun protection. So you're gonna get a little bit more sun protection under the Nesso Beach tents. The Shibumi Shade canopy also makes a flapping sound, which gets louder when the wind picks up. It doesn't bother me personally, but some people on the beach have told me they kind of find it annoying. Now, considering the shade they provide, all three of these beach tents are very lightweight and portable. The Nesso Gigante weighs 10 pounds, and the Nesso Grande is around 7.5 pounds. The Shibumi shade is the lightest, weighing less than 4 pounds. So here's the big question. Is the Shibumi shade worth it? Well, I paid $125 for the Nesso Grande, and I paid $155 for the Nesso Gigante. And that's the ballpark range you'll find for these types of canopy beach tents. Now I paid $250 for the Shibumi Shade, which is 95 bucks more than what I paid for the Gigante. Now I like the Shibumi Shade. It's fun, it's innovative, and there's really nothing else like it out there. But I do think it's overpriced for what you get. If I had to choose my favorite out of the three, it would be the Nesso Grande. It does a great job blocking the sun. It doesn't need a breeze to function properly. I can trust it on a windy day, and it takes up less space on the beach than the Gigante. And it's a good value. Now I've got some other subscribers who want to know if it's possible to anchor down a canopy beach shelter at the beach by using just stakes instead of filling up the anchor bags with sand. To get the answer, watch this video as I compare the Nesso Grande with the Sun Ninja. And I hope you take it easy at the beach.